Uh, so welcome to our last day's uh, lecture. So today we'll talk about the last type of data container, which is data lake. Um, and also we will uh, learn that how we can analyze data in data lake. Uh, so before we start, let's just review the different type of the data sources. So we already mentioned that the data can be structured. <clears throat> so that means the data organized as tables that in different rows, columns, and you can define the type of the each column. And you can also define any constraints like foreign key, primary keys, so that those tables can be related with each other. So that data can be organized very efficiently. Uh, however, there are a lot of constraints of using structured data. So especially that the data uh, that you received are not uh, well uh, structured. So it's uh, sometimes it may, may not be very easy to convert those data into those structured tables. So that's why we have those semi structured data. So semi structured structure data normally store the data into these those key value pairs so that um, <clears throat> within a file. And we mentioned there are several non SQL databases that are, can store the semi structured data, like uh, document based key value pairs, uh, network uh, database, uh, and also time series database, um, etc. So those are all the data that can be stored in those uh, databases. The unstructured data means that there's no structure in any consistent ways. So, so that including that includes all the other type of the data. So, but why do we care about unstructured data? So that is because in the real world, most of the data are unstructured. So we have about 10% that is structured, 10% uh, that is semi-structured, like CSV file, JSON file. But 80% of, of our big data actually is unstructured. Okay, so you can see that we, we do have database and we have a data warehouse, but they can only handle 20% of the data, but we still have 80% of the data that cannot uh, be stored in database or in data warehouse. So that is why we need data lake. Okay, uh, so data lake is a centralized repository, so that sounds like data warehouse. However, it allows us to, to store the structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. Okay, so we can use data, data lake to store unstructured data at any scale. Okay, um, so here are some benefits of using the data lakes. So first, it can serve as a single source of the truth. So uh, you can use data lake to host all your data set. You don't need to uh, save some uh, structured data on the relational database, semi struct in non-relational database, and also unstruct on your local computer. So you can throw everything into the data lake and we can access data lake from anywhere. And you can store any type of data and also regardless of the structure. And the data lake normally um, can, be, can be analyzed using AI and also machine learning. So uh, we already mentioned that the data warehouse <coughs> that you can ingest data from many different resources uh, through the ETL process. Okay, and also that can support efficient BI uh, analytics. Okay, but for data lake, um, it can support BI and also AI analytics. So it's machine learning and also artificial in, uh, intelligence. So imagine that like uh, if you have images, videos, uh, text message, etc. So that can start in the data lake and we can use machine learning tools to, you know, um, analyze and also explore the data that uh, from those videos and those images. So data lake uh, is can serve as a single source 
can store any type of data and which can also support AI and also uh, analyzed by using machine learning technologies. All right, uh, so now let's compare the data lake and the data warehouse. So remember that they can all serve as a single source of your data repository, but data warehouse can only store the relational data. Those are normally from like the transactional systems, et cetera. Uh, data lake can store relational data and also non-relational data. So the data like I IoT devices, uh, website, mobile apps, social medias, et cetera. Okay, so the data from those resources normally are unstructured or semi-structured. For data warehouse, because it is a relational database, you have to design the structure before you write data into the data warehouse. Okay, so you have to design the tables uh, and you can have the data that is stored to your table. Okay, so from different data source. For the data lake, because they can store any type of data, so for data lake, you can store the data into the data lake first. And when you are going to query the data, so you have to define so in what format you want to query. So that is schema on read. And this for data lake, data warehouse, it is schema on write. Okay. So that means for data warehouse, you define the structure before you write any data. For data lake, you define the structure when you want to read the data. Because when you want to read the data, you need a format that how do you want to query the data. Data warehouse provides the, the most efficient querying uh, result with a high cost. Um, a data warehouse. For data lake, uh, the querying is getting faster. Okay, so it may not as fast as a data warehouse, but the querying is getting faster. For data qualities, data warehouse can maintain high quality data set because the data have to, when, have to go through the ETL process. And that is mostly used for the BI analytics, like the BI tools and also visualizations. For data lake, it can have any type of data, so even the raw data. So you can even save the raw data into a data lake. And next, you can uh, read data, the raw data and also transform that into different uh, resources. The users are more like data scientists, developers, and also business analytics. Who are, for business analytics, they may use a curated data. And data lake is uh, especially helpful in AI and also machine learning, etc. All right. Uh, so one example of the data lake is S3. So it is simple storage service on Amazon. Uh, we also call it S3. Uh, so S3 is a storage of the internet. So that is a solution for data lake that provided by AWS. It is the best place that you can store your semi-structured structure and also unstructured data. So to be honest, if you have structured data, why do you need data lake? So you can store the structure into the database. But um, so it's the best place for your semi-structured and also unstructured. Uh, it can be used to store and also retrieve any amount of data anytime from anywhere on the web. So uh, AWS also automatically back up your data in your S3 bucket. And also they scale up your data, uh, data lake services. So if you have huge amount of the read and also write, so they will scale up the, the infra, infrastructure for you. Okay, <clears throat> so on, on S3, so uh, services, the data is organized into different buckets. Okay, so the bucket can be like the folders that uh, when you are using like um, Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox. So um, the bucket is the logic containers on S3 and within each bucket, uh, you can define multiple folders or you can just store the, any object. So the data that is stored on the buckets 
in the bar case is called object. Okay, so object is composed of the file and also any metadata that associate with those files. So, uh, so that S3 can query your files um, through the metadata. Uh, 